adding the Atari ST to your RetroPie setup gives you access to the entire software catalogue of this groundbreaking home computer. With the built-in Atari emulator, you can be up and gaming in no time. So, let's install the Atari ST. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The Atari ST was the first of the powerful 16-bit, 68,000-based home computers to be launched in 1985, just a few months ahead of the Commodore Amiga. A fast processor, 512 kilobytes of RAM, great graphics and full digital sound made this machine stand out from the 8-bit competition. Using the first full-colour Windows Icons Menu Pointer or, or WIMP operating system, you could see the difference as soon as you boot it up. With emulation, you can relive this system right now on your trusty Raspberry Pi. So we'll be using RetroPie in this tutorial, and if you've not got that installed, please do have a look at my RetroPie installation video, and I'll put links to that down below in the description. I'm going to be using my Pi 02W for this setup, so again check out my installation videos to get RetroPie working and how to overclock your Pi 02 for a bit more processing power. The Atari ST runs fine on my Pi 02, so it will work great on the Pi 3B, 4 and 400. Now in RetroPie, the emulator is not installed by default, and we've got two flavours we can choose from the LibRetro Core and the standalone Atari emulator. Now I recommend the full standalone version so you've got full control over the emulator setup and that's the one I'm going to be showing you how to install in this video. So let's get that up and running. To install Atari you need to boot up RetroPie and go to the RetroPie menu and then RetroPie setup. Once that loads up, it's a good idea to update the startup script if you haven't done that for a while. This just brings the setup coding up to date with the latest additions and software. So just select the option from the menu and run through the process. Now this might take a while, um, especially if you haven't run it for some time. But once that's all updated, we next need to install the emulator. So select the Manage Packages option manage optional packages and then scroll down to find the Hatari listing. Select that and you'll see the installation options. Now if you want the fastest install, pick the install from pre-compiled binary option. But to use the latest version of the software, um, let's just click and install from source. Now this process will take about 25 minutes uh, and that's running on my Raspberry Pi 02, so, so just leave the Pi doing its thing. Now once that's finished, you can just back up through the menus and then reboot the Raspberry Pi. When you reboot back into RetroPie, you'll find that the Atari ST option isn't yet showing. We first need to set up the emulator and add some games. So our first job is to find and install some BIOS ROMs. Now there are two options here. The real BIOS ROMs are still under copyright, so you'll have to find those for yourself out there on the internet. And to be honest, they're not that hard to find. Now as per the RetroPie documentation, you'll want the 1.04 TOS ROMs, a TOS standing for Tremel operating system, and you'll want those for the best gaming compatibility. If you want to explore the whole Atari ST lineup, then right up to the Falcon, you'll also need to find some other versions, all the way up to version 4. Now the second, and the legal route, is to use the ROMs from the MUTOS project at this web address. Now this project replaces the original TOS ROMs with a fully compatible and upgraded set of software, which will work with the full range of Atari models. And this is the one, um, the ROM set I'm going to be using in my setup. So from the MUTOS website, I want to download the 512K version. If I open that up, uh, up a zip file, I'll find a whole range of country specific ROMs. So for me, I'm going to be using the UK version. Now for whatever BIOS file you want to use, 
you'll need to rename it to toss.image. Uh, and this is the file that RetroPy will look for when it first boots the emulator. So you need to then copy this file into the BIOS folder on your RetroPy SD card. Um, you can do that either over the network using the backslash backslash RetroPy share or, or by plugging your SD card into your PC and copying the files that way. Now, if you plan on using a range of BIOS files um, that you've downloaded, uh, just copy all of these over using their original file names. And I'll show you how to load them after we get the emulator started. We now need to add some games to get the Atari ST option appearing on our RetroPie menu. So again, you'll need to get hold of these by yourself. Um, you'll need disk images, usually in the .st format, for each game that you want to play. And again, Google will help you find these. If you do get stuck in this project, uh, don't forget that I always make a support page in my main website at bitesandbits.co.uk. So, so check out the video description for a link to that. Um, also, do make sure that um, you like and subscribe to my channel to get access to all of my other gaming, coding and making projects. So once you've got some game files, just copy those onto your SD card in the Atari ST folder in the RetroPie ROMs folder. And we're now ready to go. So reboot your Raspberry Pi and you should see the Atari ST option appear in the RetroPie menu. Select that and you'll see your game files. Now we, we've got one last bit of setting up to do before we actually play games, um, but we need the emulator to be running. It's also important uh, at this point then to have a keyboard and mouse attached. Uh, and indeed, um, as we're gonna be emulating a computer with a WIMP operating system, uh, the keyboard and mouse will make the whole experience so much easier and better. So, so get those plugged in and then select any game to start the emulator. Now once the emulator starts up, uh, and even before the game actually loads, we can press the F12 key on our keyboard. And this is the shortcut key that takes us to the Hatari main menu. Uh, and this is a screen you're going to be seeing quite a lot of. Now as you can see, we've got access to view and edit the way the emulator works. So let's create our default emulation setup. So firstly, click on the system button. And this screen lets you select the Atari ST model that you want to emulate, along with some model-specific features. So I'm just leaving mine as a standard ST model, as this will work with the most games. Now, some titles may need a more advanced model, uh, and, uh, but this is, of course, where you're going to make that change. Next, on the CPU screen, you can select the processor options. So selecting the model on the previous screen will set most of these options to match that particular model. But you can, of course, just come in here and override them if you want. If you do find a piece of software is running slowly, you can try speeding it up a bit here by increasing the CPU clock. Now, the Atari emulator does try to accurately emulate the hardware timings um, so that they match real world times. Um, but I'm just going to leave mine now as a standard ST model. So next we can open up the ROM screen. And this is where we can change the BIOS software. You'll see that the system is set to use that toss.image file in the BIOS folder that we renamed. Now, if you do decide you want to use a different BIOS, just click on the Browse button and then find and select that file. So back on the main menu, let's select the RAM option. And here we can set how much RAM our ST has. So I'm just going to give mine a little bit extra at 4 megabytes. The joystick option lets you set up your game controllers. Now, ST Joystick 1 is the default port used for the Player 1 controls. As you can see, you can use the keyboard and set up your own keyboard mapping, or select a controller that you've got plugged into your Raspberry Pi. ST Joystick 0 is usually used by the mouse, but you can set a second controller there if you want to. The next setting screen we need to look at is the Hatari screen options. So RetroPie will have made most of the selections for you, but you'll probably see a little green box in the top right corner of the screen. Now this is the floppy drive activity light. 
And if you want to turn it off, just set the indicators option to none. So lastly, go to the floppy disks option. And this is where we can add and swap floppy disks during the emulation. Some games came on multiple floppies, so you'll need to come here and swap them over as the software asks for them. For now, we need to eject any floppy images in the drives, as we'll be saving this setup as our default configuration. We then need to set the default floppy directory, just to make it easier for us to find the game files. So click the Browse button and navigate to the ROMs folder. And this will be in RetroPie, ROMs, Atari ST. OK that, and we're all set to go. So on the main menu screen, select the Save Config option, and then just OK that and select the default options. So finally, click Quit, and this should drop you back into RetroPie, but with our emulator default settings all in place. Now we just need to play some games. So back in the Atari ST section, just select the game, and I'm picking Fire and Ice, as this is a two-disc game, so I'll show you how to swap discs. Now when you get hold of games, try to get hold of cracked versions. The original discs quite often have some form of protection, where you might need some unlock device that came in the game box. Now hacked versions make sure you can get through this very easily, and then they usually add some extra features into the game as well, such as infinite lives if you need them. But in Fire and Ice, um, you'll eventually get to the screen where it asks for disc number two. So simply press F12 to get back to your Atari main menu and select floppy disks. Eject the current disk in drive A and then browse for disk 2. So back on the main menu, make sure that the no reset option is selected. The OK button is going to take you back into the emulator, but if you select reset, this will also reset the Atari ST when it does so. Now sometimes you are going to need to do this to get games to start, but for now we just want to resume where we left off. So back in the game, just click the fire button and the game will finish loading. So that should get you up and running with the Atari ST in RetroPie. And do make sure you explore the system as there are a lot of really great titles out there. With Atari, you can also have a play with some of the applications from the day. Now, if, if you're into music, you'll probably know that the Atari ST was the music production tool of the 80s and 90s, due to its built-in MIDI interface. So why not have a go with some of the very original DAW software? So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos on gaming, coding and making. I look forward to seeing you again very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.